Who are the four creatures in heaven? Ezekiel gives us an insight to the four creatures when he witnesses the throne room of God. The account of the prophecy given by Ezekiel is not a fable from another time and place. He was a real man who lived in a real place and had remarkable visions of God on a real day. The word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel, the priest. God's word not only came to Ezekiel, the priest, but it came remarkably. The meaning of the name Ezekiel can be interpreted as the strength of God or strengthened by God. Ezekiel first noticed a fierce whirlwind coming from the north. Then he saw four living creatures with four eyes, lion, ox, eagle, and man, four wings, straight feet, and hands under its wings. The creatures represent God's attributes seen in creation, his majesty, power, swiftness, and wisdom. The Lord of glory sat on a throne above the firmament. There was a wheel, or rather a wheel within a wheel, beside each living creature. The vision of God's glory came before Ezekiel's call to the prophetic ministry. We see parallels with John in Revelation. However, Ezekiel provides a much more detailed description of the four living creatures. Ezekiel 1, 5-9 And in the fire was what looked like four living creatures, in appearance, their form was human, but each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, their feet were like those of a calf and gleamed like burnished bronze. Under their wings on their four sides, they had human hands. All four of them had faces and wings, and the wings of one touched the wings of another. Each one went straight ahead. They did not turn as they moved. The four living creatures are also found in Revelation. Revelation 4, 6-9 Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings, and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever. There is no indication that these beings are figurative in the text that describe them. Rather, they are presented as real, actual beings. The four living creatures, literally beings, are a special, exalted order of angelic beings or cherubim. This is made abundantly clear by the proximity of these individuals to the throne of God. Ezekiel 1, 12-20 Each one went straight ahead. Wherever the Spirit would go, they would go, without turning as they went. The appearance of the living creatures was like burning coals of fire or like torches. Fire moved back and forth among the creatures. It was bright, and lightning flashed out of it. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes and lightning. As I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparkled like topaz, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of the four directions the creatures faced. The wheels did not change direction as the creatures went. Their rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. When the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them moved, and when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go and the wheels would rise along with them, because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Revelation chapter 5 verses 6 through 14 explain the functions or responsibilities of the four living creatures. They prostrate themselves before the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ, and offers the same reverence to him as they did the Father, proof positive of the deity of Jesus Christ. Revelation 5, 6 to 9. And there between the throne, with the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb, Christ, standing, bearing scars and wounds, 
as though it had been slain with seven horns, complete power, and with seven eyes, complete knowledge, which are the seven spirits of God who have been sent on duty into all the earth. And he came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, Christ, each one holding a harp and a golden bowl full of fragrant incense, which are the prayers of the saints, God's people. And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to take its seals, for you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Along with the twenty-four elders, they have harps and golden vials full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They have harps and golden vials full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they are accompanied by twenty-four elders. In the Old Testament, harps are frequently associated with worship. Harps are also associated with prophecy. The purpose of the four living creatures also has to do with declaring the holiness of God and leading in worship the adoration of God. Additionally, the four living creatures play a role in the execution of God's justice in some fashion. These beings are an exalted order of angels whose purpose is primarily that of worship. Revelation 19.4 The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, and they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Later on, Ezekiel was able to determine that these extraordinary beings were cherubim, which are angels that surround God and possess their own distinct power and glory. Before his fall, Satan was among the cherubim covering God's throne. Ezekiel 28, 14-16 You were the anointed cherub who covers and protects, and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire, sparkling jewels. You were blameless in your ways, from the day you were created until unrighteousness and evil were found in you. Through the abundance of your commerce, you were internally filled with lawlessness and violence, and you sinned. Therefore I have cast you out as a profane and unholy thing from the mountain of God. And I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Since the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God among Israel, Yahweh was sometimes called He who dwells between the cherubim. 1 Samuel 4.4 So the people sent men to Shelah, and they brought back the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord Almighty, who was enthroned between the cherubim, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. The Appearance of the Living Creatures Ezekiel 1 10 to 14. Regarding the form and appearance of their faces, they each had the face of a man in front, and each had the face of a lion on the right side, and the face of an ox on the left side. All four also had the face of an eagle at the back of their heads. Such were their faces. Among the living beings, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches moving back and forth among the living beings. The fire was bright and lightning was flashing from the fire, and the living beings moved rapidly back and forth like flashes of lightning. In John's vision of heaven, there appeared to be four different creatures. Since the beginning of time, students of the Bible, students in general, and artists have been inspired by these four different faces. The cherubim are a group of celestial beings created by God. They are the first of the angelic hierarchy to appear in the Bible, immediately following Adam and Eve's fall from grace. Genesis 3 records the events in the Garden of Eden, having violated God's commandment not to partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It would have been likely for Adam and Eve to reach out their hands and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. As a result, they were forced to leave their earthly paradise. But what would have stopped Adam from going back to the garden and disobeying God again? The answer is given in this verse. What a terrible situation it would have been if Adam had eaten of the tree of life and so have been perpetually established in his fallen state. 
God sent a contingent of glorious and trusted cherubim to guard access to the tree to prevent that. We don't know Adam's reaction to witnessing those glorious cherubim for the first time in human history. Perhaps awe, fright, and wonder are all emotions that come to mind. Adam realized that his transgression had cut him off from the company and presence of a holy God. Oddly enough, the next occurrence of the cherubim in the Bible involves recovering what was lost. In Exodus 25, Moses was given specific and detailed instructions on how to make several articles of furniture that would be used in the tabernacle. The Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat, where God promised to meet and commune with Moses, were the first to be detailed. What did God want to go over or on top of the Mercy Seat? He chose representations of the cherubim in gold. What an awesome sight that must have been, the cherubim associated with the very presence of God. From those two sources in the Bible, it appears as though the cherubim's major responsibility may be to declare man's sinfulness and protect the presence of God from sinful men. As much as Adam yearned to return to the Garden of Eden, the cherubim reminded him that he had broken God's law. The high priest of Israel would be allowed into the Holy of Holies once a year to gaze upon the mercy seat. I'm sure he must have felt on each occasion, I don't belong here in the holy presence of God, for I am a sinner. Cherubim are real and powerful beings. However, the cherubim in the Bible were often representative of heavenly things. They were integrated into the design of the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle at God's command. Ezekiel 10, 8-14 Under the wings of the cherubim could be seen what looked like human hands. Their entire bodies, including their backs, their hands and their wings, were completely full of eyes, as were their four wheels. The cherubim are shown in Ezekiel 10 as having not only wings and hands, but also being full of eyes, encompassed by wheels within wheels. However, Ezekiel also paints a gloomy tone in chapter 10, and the cherubim provide the hint. The prophet presents his vision that prophesizes the destruction of Jerusalem. In Ezekiel 9.3, the Lord has descended from his throne above the cherubim to the threshold of the temple. In the calm before the storm, we see the cherubim stationed on the south side of the sanctuary. Being stationed in a position toward the city, they witness the beginning of the gradual withdrawal of God's glory from Jerusalem. The fluttering of their wings indicates immensely important events to follow. While Ezekiel 10 is difficult to understand, one point comes across clearly. The cherubim are associated with God's splendor. This chapter is one of the Bible's most cryptic, yet evocative passages about God's grandeur, and it involves angelic beings. It should be read with care and prayer. Few other chapters in the Bible give the reader a feeling of God's greatness and glory, while the seraphim and cherubim are members of distinct hierarchies and are shrouded in mystery in the Bible. They have one thing in common. They constantly glorify God. But as wonderful as angelic and heavenly beings are, they pale in comparison to our heavenly Lamb, the Lord of glory before whom all powers in heaven and on earth bow in holy worship and breathless adoration. Psalms 81 Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth. God's glory will not be denied, and every heavenly being gives silent or vocal testimony to the splendor of God. In the tabernacle in the wilderness, Designs representing the guardian cherubim formed a part of the mercy seat and were made of gold. Exodus 25:18. The cherubim did more than protect God's most holy place from those who had no right to be there. They also assured the high priest's right to enter the holy place with blood as the people's mediator with God. He, and he alone, was allowed to enter into the inner sanctuary of the Lord. By right of redemption, and in accordance with the status of believers, each true child of God now has straightforward access as a believer priest to the presence of God through Jesus. 
Cherubim will not refuse the humblest Christian access to the throne. They assure us that we can come boldly because of Christ's work on the cross. The veil in the temple has been rent. As Paul says, Ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Ephesians 2.19 Further, Peter assures, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. 1 Peter 2.9 The inner sanctuary of God's throne is always open to those who have repented of sin and trusted Christ as Saviour.